parcel has been delivered. The situation in the Middle East escalated dramatically this morning as U.S. fighter bombers and cruise missiles struck at military targets inside Karak. The U.S. State Department released classified satellite photos which it claims show Karaki forces attacking across the border of neighboring Andabia, a longtime U.S. ally and the region's major oil producer. Karak condemned the attack and threatened an immediate response aimed at, quote, the heart of the Western devil, unquote. Now, what the statement portends is not yet clear, but it must be taken seriously in light of this morning's hostilities. This is Charles Wright reporting live from the Gulf of Karak. Agar, Tomashar, Kone, Hamashis, Kuvas, Biden. Samoyan. Video conference, sync set, screen two. Admiral Wells, a senior sit rep on our morale problems. Can't say I recall anything like this. Uh, no, sir. Phony letters describing infidelities at home from supposed family neighbors. Very scary anonymous emails saying, you have a nice family. Then listing kids' names, addresses, pictures, current schools, class schedules, make, model, license of cars, etc. cetera. I mean, no actual threats, of course, but drives our guys crazy credit problems caused by sophisticated yet fraudulent credit reports. It's affecting much of the task force from it listed on up. All of it cyber-based, as it were? Yes, sir. Creating significant morale problems. Tokyo Rose has come a long way. And you think this stuff is being generated by the Karakis? Could be. We've now engaged strong authentication protocols, which seems to be solving many of the problems. I think... Major failure of network detected. Tom's reconfiguring for video link at reduced value. Intrusion detection agent has isolated anomalous behavior. Situation data transferred to JTF response cell. Systems restored. As I was saying, the digital certificates seem to be doing the trick. They've stopped the intrusions, but we're not out of the woods yet. Jack analyzed node three. What was that? That node was the Telios 37 commercial relay satellite seems to be completely shut down according to network monitors. The intrusion detection system points to an attack on its ground control system. Based on other attacks the IDS is seeing right now, it does not seem to be an attack on the military infrastructure. It appears to be a collateral effect of a general attack. We need to elevate this. Generating flash op rep 3. All right, tighten down the ComSat boundary controllers to block that attack sequence and start traceback. Auto forensics should have countermeasures developed in 90 seconds. As soon as those countermeasures are validated, ship the new signatures. People, the situation is more serious than we thought. We've received orders from Sync IW. Go to Infocon Delta. Should we switch over to DOD Special Reserve Mechanisms as a precaution? No. I want to hold that one back for a Class 1 cyber attack. I want a reevaluation of the situation impact on our mission. Aye, aye, sir. Updating mission status from all components. Infocon Delta. Higher Assurance VPNs or all comms over external networks. Internal encryption of traffic. Restrict all non-essential traffic. Establish no-fly zones on all of our unclassified internet subnetworks. Activate wrappers on all critical machines and applications at recommended policy level, Sierra. This is no coincidence. Computer override. Initiate level Tango policy. Institute immediate re-authentication across the board. Tighten down to level tango policy. Stage one countermeasures deployed. Sir, you'll note updated mission status on the main screen. The attack could have seriously impacted our ability to achieve our objectives, but the countermeasures we've employed have been effective. 
We're within 5% of timeline. Very good. Keep me posted should anything change. Admiral, we have an NLN report, screen two. This may be relevant. The problem began this morning, and it's apparently not limited to this city. All across the frigid eastern seaboard, a series of power failures have had serious effects, leaving many people in dire straits without heat, lights, or water. Traffic accidents have brought everything to a stop, stranding motorists in freezing weather. Banks have been hard-pressed to explain severe ATM malfunctions across several states. All business, transportation, and communications are feeling the effects of the outages. Random or not, they've caused quite a scare, particularly set against the backdrop of the tense Middle East situation. Karak continues to express outrage over what it is calling unprovoked military aggression by the Think information warfare. Video conference. Good. Screen one, please. Bobby, we've gone to Infocon Delta. What's happening? We're taking hits across the board. Financial sector, transportation, especially power. And we're seeing the same thing in friendly countries in Western Europe and the Middle East. Not as bad, but significant. Prime One Alert. NSC. Screen One. Open it and conference existing VTC. The president is declaring a national cyber emergency, shifting NIPC to a primary defense role. Well, this gives NIPC a dramatically increased IA coordination role with legally protected information sharing and significant IA directive power. Now, in accordance with procedures, the NIPC director is designated commander Colonel Maxwell from JAG and Ms. Elston from the Department of Justice will assist. Understood. I want status reports from all sectors, ASAP. We're checking with the Power Sector Defense Control Center now. Jim, what's going on across the sector? We've analyzed the ongoing penetrations. The break-ins are occurring here in the east at these specifically more vulnerable generator and transmission control facilities. These attackers really know what they're doing. Based on their pattern so far, we see additional attacks hitting these probable targets. I need tracebacks. Underway. We have a 96% probability on the next target uh, based on what they've done so far and I hypothesize objective of collapse in the East Coast power grid. Uh, do we go fishbowl for uh, observation and forensics? Affirmative. Search for what might be common across the targets hit so far. Uh, let's see what this guy's after and how he's doing it. I want to clone the likely target sites at the fishbowl and deploy rerouting software to those sites that will redirect the attacks and other traffic to the fishbowl. Can you get me more than one site simulation and attack? Uh, negative. This technology is extremely resource intensive. We only have one semi-operational fishbowl and it can only handle one site simulation and attack at a time. Well, let's make it a good one. We have a go? That's affirmative. Computer, deploy cloning and diverter software. Working. This attack is so fast it must be scripted. Where do they get the inside information? It looks like they're going after the utility's grid control systems. They just sent some strange set of characters to an unusual port on the system control server. Uh-oh. The Novo soft control software just responded and shut down the other control ports on the server. We are in deep trouble. There's evidently a Trojan horse in there. Nova soft is used by over half of our control centers. No question. They're trying to cause massive power disruptions. Look at the down and distance projection. Attacks confined to the East Coast and time for dark rush hours. Washington and New York control areas have reported significant physical damage to two 1100 megawatt generators. Analysis of common factors in today's attacks indicate that Novo Soft Control Software version 7.6 is used by at least one utility in all control areas that were attacked. We've got 20 minutes to get things contained and controlled, or else we're going down. Given projected rate of intrusions and current demand patterns, cascading failure will begin at approximately 1630. East Coast Islandization pattern is not predictable. Computer, 
ordered all security coordinator regions and their control areas to isolate immediately any attack subcontrol areas and start shutting down any and all Novosoft control systems in their areas, beginning with version 7.6. Use any available backup control systems. Then analyze high, medium, and low preemptive islandization COAs in light of those actions and timelines. Preliminary reports indicate that switching to backup control systems will take a minimum of two hours. I need more bandwidth. You've got to get ahead of these guys. We're running a genetic algorithm to focus tactics. It looks like the reflexive response capabilities seem to be buying us more time. Recommended COA. Medium option. Matt, I don't like that projected casualty range. I'm overriding. Recommended low preemptive islandization COA based on cost benefit assessment. I concur. Implementing. Uh, sir, we've detected new attacks. Uh, they look to be primarily on the west coast. Uh, different mechanisms. Uh, time bombs, uh, Trojan horses, insiders. Wicked stuff. Abort implementation. Reanalyze COAs. Working. We've got to go with the high COA. We'll take some serious casualties. There'll be traffic fatalities, medical emergencies. It'll get worse as these cities go dark and the temperatures dip even lower. But this current model says we don't have any choice. Agree. Implementing COA high. Well, I think we've dodged another bullet. But somebody better put these SOBs out of commission before our luck goes south. Video conference, sync information warfare, and NIPC director, main screen. What kind of attack methods are we seeing? Sir, if we filter out the levels and types we routinely see with hackers and low-level industrial espionage, these are the ones of interest. Now, based on capabilities, we have 300 organizations and or governments with the means and motives to attack the power grid, financial and transportation sectors in the manners we've identified. What are we getting from IA sensors? Well, we still can't confirm if you're experiencing a single coordinated attack or a couple of major offensives against us. Are we fighting more than one adversary? It's possible. Let's see if there's a suggestive pattern. Computer, display attack routes and current sensor configuration. Sir, I recommend activating probes through all level one and two systems and foreign networks. There's a hole here. We'll need to deploy class three sensors to disambiguate in this area. I agree. Do it. Action denied. Standing authorization for transit is class two. Ma'am, recommending deploying class two now to get partial info. Okay. Apparently, that part of the network is a coalition ally. I'll request NCA authorization to use Class 3. Very good. I want to maintain intensive software integrity checks across the board. No surprises here. We're down to 130 likely adversaries. 92. 57. Holding. Seven. What else can we do to narrow the list? I'm running an intrusion anomaly report correlation. We're down to 12 probable suspect organizations. With what we've got, that's as far as we can get. Workable. Let's run an adversary course of action analysis on each candidate. Here we go. Let's play a little chess. Folks, we've got a new problem here. 
Go ahead, Coronado. My field commanders in theater are reporting severe ammunition shortages and snafus, incorrect caliber ordnance, mismatched parts, supplies arriving late but confirmed on time by redundant system checks. Look, perfect correlation, confirmed deliveries, but it's not right. Suggest you institute extra integrity and procedural checks. It'll help reduce the problem, but it'll also degrade performance, so be aware. Roger that. I think we've got a common failure point. Hmm. Look at that application. Run the malicious code detection suite with database corruption checking. The system is now analyzing the system policies and access histories. We can determine what users had developer maintenance and or administrative access to each of the problem areas in the software or database within the last six months. Here we go, the folks with access. Some government guys, some military, plus a few vendors and contractors. Every one of these people had opportunity. Well, let's see if there's anything fishy about any of them. Computer, get me the FBI, Departments of Justice and Treasury online. We've completed checks on our suspects. Most check out to be legitimate. There are seven still unexplained, some with suspect political leanings and a few with questionable bank accounts. I've got a simultaneous translation. Main screen, Interpol. Two of these people have Swiss bank accounts. One owns a corporation in the Maldives. If we have more news, we'll pass it on. We checked out the three people with suspect political backgrounds. None are considered to be suspects in this case. We will, of course, keep you posted. Maybe. We're down to four. And one of them appears to be unrelated to any of the 12 suspected terrorist groups. Just a crooked vendor is about to go out of business. But the other three could be tied into one or more of the groups. Look. I'm running a program to match the malicious code we found with programming profile subsets for all 12 suspect organizations. Let's check them out. In detail, I want to know everything there is to know. Get some eyeballs on this now. Computer, generate sit rep to sync IW. Let's get these guys. Gentlemen, we believe we may have just pieced together the puzzle. The pattern of events indicates a conspiracy of coordinated cyber terrorist activity. Our analysis has identified a pattern that is far from random. It is our assessment that a transnational collection of cyber terrorists controlled and funded by Karak is our culprit. That fits with our analysis of Karaki objectives. Their goal is to split the coalition, undermine U.S. resolve, drive us out of the region. They know they can't beat us in a traditional military showdown. It looks like cyber terrorism is a major part of their strategy. Our analysis has led us to a corporation, which we believe is directing and coordinating these activities. Its name is Transnational Global Resources, and it's headquartered on the Karaki-owned island of Tambora in the Gulf of Karak. Now, here are the options we're looking at. We'll give you a full briefing at 1500 to take of the president. Sporadic blackouts across the U.S. last night made for frustrating commutes on both coasts. Indeed, as many as 50 traffic fatalities have been blamed on the outages. No cause has been announced. On the international front, a global news network poll shows that American support for the coalition action against Curac has dropped precipitously, possibly due to anxiety over the recent spate of cyber-related domestic problems. These are doomed in America, and they are not so much in the world. Hello, Bia, Chigabshut. Bia, in the title. On this bill, you have to stand up for me. Functioning? Absolutely. On this bill, you have to stand up for me. Bia, 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 Bia. Jack, per the president's authorization, we've commenced Operation Sandstorm. At 0930, we initiated an IW counterattack on the infrastructure of transnational global resources and cyber targets of opportunity inside Karak. Initial reports are encouraging. The Karaki government has had enough. 
They've opened back channel communications with state. Apparently, they are shocked, shocked, to discover that a cyber terrorist organization has somehow been linked to them. Naturally, Karak has given us their blessing to take them out. <laughs> Wednesday's rash of power outages and computer glitches was apparently due to the actions of a sophisticated terrorist operation based in the Middle East. The U.S. military, working in concert with the NIPC, has destroyed the operation and captured its leaders. More as details become available. On the international front, tensions have eased perceptibly in the wake of Karak's unilateral withdrawal from Adabia. The stock market is rebounding with a vengeance, and that's no surprise. Hey boss, you want a hot stock tip? How's that? Karaki pencils. Apparently they are in high demand right now. Seems they've been having some computer problems over the last few days. That's insider trading. Yes, sir. Confirming transition to Infocon Alpha. JTF on stand down status. Lessons learned database updating and disseminating. Steady as she goes.